Hey guys, welcome back to this series. In the last tutorial, we were able to set up our recycler view, which includes designing the row, which is what we see here, and also setting up our recycler view adapter. And also, we went ahead to create some dummy data and bound it to our recycler view. So if you're yet to watch the last tutorial video, I'd advise that you watch it first of all, then come back and continue with this one. The reason is so that you can be in sync with what we are doing. So in this particular tutorial, we are going to be focusing on setting up our input dialog fragment. So I'm going to pull up an example so that we see exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so we're going to have this dialog fragment that will enable us to collect the information about a particular alumni. So dialog fragments are very useful because they more like provide ways for us to collect input or display some information to our users without having them to leave the activity. So it's more like a dialogue fragment is a sub-activity of a main activity. So guys, without wasting much time, let's jump right into it. Now, the first thing we need to do will be to create a new layout. The inflate that we saw earlier on in the example is the layout. So we're going to need to design that. So to do that, I'm going to go to my layout folder and I'm going to add a new layout. Okay, so this layout, I'm going to call it new alumni. So click on add. Okay, so as our layout is loading, we can go ahead and start designing our view. So this is a linear layout. We will leave it at that. We have the orientation as vertical. And the layout width is match parent and the height is match parent. So one thing I need to add would be the mean width, which will be equal to 300 dp. So the next thing we need to add would be the title of the dialogue fragment, as you can see here. So this is actually a test view, so we need to add it up. So I'm going to define a new test view. Now I'm going to add the test, which will be equal to register alumni. So the next thing will be to add the height. So the height will be 60 dp and the width. The width will be match parent. So the layer gravity will be center because we want it to be at the center and the gravity will be center. Boom. Now the next thing we need to set will be the test size, which will be 18 SP. And the next thing we need to do will be to set the style, the test style. We need it to be bold. Boom. So this is all for our text view. So the next thing we need to add will be a divider, which will be a view. So guys, let's proceed. So the next thing we need to do will be to define a new linear layout which will hold our input boxes or we usually call it edit test okay so i'm going to define my linear layout so of course our linear layout needs some attributes so that's the pardon will be match parent and the width will be match parent as well and the orientation will be vertical now the next thing we need to do will be to define our edit test okay but this is not going to be a regular edit test we're going to make use of test input layout you know to have this very nice animation you know that pulls up the hint to the top so this kind of animation is made possible with the support libraries test input layout okay so that's what we are actually going to be making use of so guys let's go ahead and make use of that quickly so i'm going to say android dot support dot design dot widget dot test input layout okay so this is it now we're gonna make it a container boom so the next thing we need to do will be to assign some attributes to it all right i'm gonna go ahead and set the layout height which will be wrap content and the width which will be match parent and the id so the id will be full name test so to complete setting up our test input layout we're gonna need to define an edit test inside of the test input layout so this is more like the regular way of making use of test input layer. You wrap it around an edit test, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and define a new edit test. So we're going to set the hint first. The hint will be full name and the layout height will be equal to wrap content and, and the width will be equal to match parent. Boom, you can see that showing up already. Now the test size is going to be 18 SP. That's for the test size. Boom, so this is all we need to do. Now, just to ensure that we have good user experience, we're gonna add IME options. We're gonna send this to Action Nest, okay? So one is such a way that when I finish imputing the full name, I could just tap Nest, you know, to jump over to the next test impute layout, okay? So this is actually good for user experience. Now we are done with that. So the next thing we need to do will be to set up the remaining test impute layouts for department set and also this this is going to be a spinner okay so guys let's jump right into it 
just to ensure that we save ourselves a lot of time so we're gonna go ahead and copy this and paste it into three places you know this is more like a shorthand and saves us a lot of time so I'm gonna go ahead and copy this we're gonna paste it once we're gonna paste it twice so we now have three test input layouts now the next thing to do will be to edit the attributes this will have to be department and the ID I have to change it to department test now this is going to be set and I'm going to set this to set test so we have that now the next thing we need to do will be to add a spinner okay so I'm going to go to our Nugget package manager and install a Nugget package called material spinner so I'm going to click on manage Nugget package so I'm going to browse I'm going to search for material spinner okay so this is the one we're looking for so we're going to go ahead and install this so we're going to go ahead and accept this so our nugget package manager was installed successfully so i'm going to go ahead and close this and we need to build our app before we continue so we're going to go ahead and click on build okay so our build was successful now we're going to go back to our design we're going to close all of this up so I'm gonna search for material spinner, and there it is. So I'm gonna hit tab to enter, boom. So we'll have a material spinner. Now what we're gonna do is to set up the layout height and weight. The height is going to be wrap content, and the width is going to be match parent, okay? So you can see that showing up already. So now we need to set up the ID. So we're gonna call this status spinner. Now we have that, there are other attributes that we need, but before we have that, we need to first of all import a new XML namespace. So I'm going to say XML NS app. So this is going to be equal to REST Auto. This is the namespace we actually need. So I just went ahead and imported that. So I'm going to go back to our material spinner. So now there are some attributes we still need to assign. So I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm going to set this to true. So we're going to have select or select status rather. So the hint is going to be select status as well. So this is all we need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and save this up. So now that we have that, the last thing we need to do will be to define our button. So I'm going to go ahead and define a new button and the height, which will be 40 dp. This is my lucky number when it comes to making use of buttons. And the width, this will be 300 dp. And the layout gravity, we're gonna set it to center horizontal, okay? So as you can see, it is now horizontally aligned. So the test is going to read submit. Now we need to set the background. So we want the background to be primary color. Now finally, we want the test color to be white. Okay, so this is all we need to do. But lastly, we want kind of a little bit of margin to the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and say android.layer margin top. So this will add some margin to the top of our button. So we're gonna just set it to 20 dp and boom, we're done. So guys, the next thing we need to do will be to set up our dialogue fragment. Now to do that, we're gonna go to our solution explorer. If you guys remember appropriately, I explained that I have a knack for keeping things organized. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder. I'm gonna call it fragment. Now we're gonna add a new fragment. So we're gonna select fragment. Now the name of the fragment will be add alumni fragment. Now the next thing we need to do will be to set it up as a dialog fragment. So to do that, I'm gonna have to change this. Now the next thing we need to do will be to inflate our view. But just to keep things pretty clean, I'm gonna go ahead and say view view equal to inflator dot inflate new alumni. So what we're doing here is to inflate the new layout we just designed as the layout for our dialog fragment okay so this is exactly what we have here now this will go ahead and set up our dialog fragment but before we finish up here we need to kind of put in the reference for our full name test our department test our set test and of course we need to fully set up our material spinner as well so to do that i'm going to go ahead and say full name test now we need to do the same thing for our department test and also our set test and our material spinner. Okay, it currently doesn't exist. We need to bring it in. 
So we're going to call this status spinner. And of course, our button. Guys, so now that we have this, we need to reference them inside of our onQueryView method. So to do that, I'm going to say full name test will be equal to test impute layout. Then I'm going to say view dot find view by ID resource dot ID dot full name test. We're going to have to do the same for our department test and also do the same thing for our set test. Now we'll have to do the same thing for our status spinner. And finally for our button. So I'm very certain that you guys already know how to do this, but I'm going to try to be quick with it so that we don't waste all the whole time here doing all the things that we already know how to do but if you don't this is a welcome development okay so it seems we don't have an id for our submit button so let's quickly add that up so we're gonna go ahead and save it we need to go back to our alumni fragment okay so this will be properly resolved when we build our application so guys the next thing we need to do will be to set up our status spinner you know, when we drop down our spinner, okay, those items you see there, we are actually created using an array. So what we need to do now is to set up the status spinner in such a way that when you drop it down, you will see some items, okay? So to do that, I will need to define a new list. So I'm going to say list strings. I'm going to call this status list. So this will be the list of the statuses that we have. So whatever thing that will add to this list is what will be displaying when we drop down our spinner. Our spinner will need an array adapter. It should be of type of string. I'm going to call this adapter. So now that we have this, I'm going to need to create a new method. I'm going to call this setup, setup status spinner. Okay. So I'm going to say status list will be equal to new list of string. So the items we're going to be having as our status we include. So I'm going to say status list or add. So I'm going to have graduated and I'll also have on the graduate. I'll also have dropped out. So in this category, you will find Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, even Speedy. A lot of a lot of them actually will fall inside of this category. So. This will be a very hot category, I must tell you guys. <laughs> okay, so that is on the lighter note. Let's continue. So this will be failed. Boom. So the next thing I'm going to do will be to initialize the adapter, array adapter of type of string. I'm going to pass it our activity, which is the contest. And I'm going to say android.resource.layout simple spinner drop down item okay so this is the layout we're going to be using which was provided to us by android by default and i'm going to pass the status list here and boom now finally i'm going to say adapter set drop down view resource now i'm going to say android the resource the layout the simple drop down item so now we have that now i'm going to say status spinner dot adapter this will be equal to adapter that we just created Boom. So guys, what we did here was to set up our status spinner, which required us to create a list of the statuses that we have. And also we made a new array adapter of type of string. I will pass it the list of the string that we created earlier on. And also we set the adapter of the status spinner to this adapter that we created. And that's all we did. So now to finalize with everything, I'm going to go ahead and call this method here, setup spinner. Okay, so this will go ahead and do all the magic for us. So guys, this is all we need to do for now in this fragment. I'm going to go ahead and build an app so that we ensure that everything is well resolved, especially this particular error we have here. Okay, so build was successful. I don't know why this guy is not yet resolved, but let's continue. Now, the next thing we need to do will be to go to our main activity and we're going to initialize this dialog fragment. So this is our main activity. Now, what we need to do here will be to add a click event handler for our add button. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and say add button dot click plus equal to and tab. So we have a new click event handler for our add button. Now, what we need to do will be to initialize the fragment. But before then, I want to declare a global instance of this dialog fragment. So I'm going to go ahead and say add alumni fragment so this is the name of the new fragment we created but we need to add a reference to it so that's well resolved this is because we added it into a new folder 
So we needed to bring the reference to the folder inside of our main activity. I'm going to name this add alumni fragment. Now the next thing will be to initialize it. So I'm going to come to the add button, click event handler. I'm going to say add alumni fragment will be equal to new add alumni fragment. Now I'm going to say vatrans. So this is a transaction manager. This will be equal to support fragment manager dot begin transaction. Now the next thing I need to do will be to say add alumni fragment dot show. Okay, here I'm going to pass it our fragment manager, our transaction manager rather, and we're going to add the tag. Say new alumni. Okay, so this is all we need to do. So guys, now that we have all this set, we need to go ahead and run our app and ensure that everything works appropriately. Okay, so our app is deploying. So our app is deployed. So we're gonna go ahead and click on add button. Boom. So guys, so you see, we have our register alumni dialog fragment. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this down. Boom. So as you can see, everything is just the way we wanted it. So we have our statuses well set up. So we're gonna select one, graduated. So everything is showing as we want it. So guys, this is exactly what we want to achieve in this class and we've we'll hit it. So I hope you really enjoyed the class. So guys, see you in the next tutorials. So if you really enjoyed the video, give a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're yet to do so. And also turn on the notification bell so that you always get notified whenever I make this kind of video. So guys, see you soon.